put coordinate system. That is the coordinate system the shape file I brought in is, which is geographic coordinate system of world geodetic system of 1984. So the next thing I will have to do is for me to specify the output where I want the software to save the file, the projected file that I'm going to create to. You can see this row project. What I'll just do is I'll browse to this location. That's uh, my project folder, which is under Drive C, Online GIS Training, and you can see my shape file here. I see I have them here. So what I'll just do is I'll call this one road. Instead of roads, I'll just remove the S. I'll call it road. The one I'm projecting. That's the one that is going to be in projected coordinate system. So I'll click on save. Then I will now specify the coordinate system I want the software to take this road to. Here now I'll just click on this. I have my favorite here. I won't use the favorite. For you that are, you have not been using the software before, what you just do is you come to projected coordinate systems. Projected coordinate system. Under this projected coordinate systems, there are a series of them. There are a lot of them here that we can make use of. But the one we'll be making use of is UTM. By the time we drop down the UTM, you see there are a series of them too. But uh, in Nigeria here, there is something I usually tell people that we only have three zones in Nigeria. That's when it comes to projected coordinate system under UTM. Uh, Nigeria is under Africa. If you should click on Africa, our datum that we are making use of is Minadatum. If you, if you press <clears throat> M, it will take you nearer to where you can locate Mina. You can see Mina, UTM zone 31. Mina UTM zone 32. But how will someone know that the work you're doing falls under zone 31 or zone 32? If you look at this longitude, this place, this is the longitude. That's uh, our X. This X is within the range of 0 to 6. So from 0 to 6, that's zone 31. From 6 to 12, that's zone 32 and why from 12 to 18 that's zone 33 the reason i'm telling you this is that you might be working in a place where your uh your project falls into two zones so that you know how to go about it once you know the demarcation for each zones assuming now that this utm because we are only having minazo 31 minazo 32 we don't have minazo 33 if the work you are doing is it falls to zone 33 instead of you you using me now what you just do is under this utm you come to word word of geodetic 1984 nigeria falls into northern hemisphere you can always find zone 31 32 and 33 here easily without any stress you can see them zone 31 zone 32 zone 33 and the beauty of it is Zone 31 here is the same thing as Zone 31 in Minate Zone 31 because of these parameters. If you study this parameter for this particular one under World of WGS 1984, which is this one here in the Northern Hemisphere, this very parameter that we are having here, if you can study it very well, by the time you come to Africa and you pick Mina, you see that that parameter is still the same thing. You see the parameter is still the same thing. So for the purpose of this class, we'll be using MINA UTM 031 because our area falls within the range of 0 to 6, which is zone 31. So I'll just pick MINA zone 31. So it has automatically given me the output coordinate system. The next thing I will do is to click on this OK for me to run this too. But I I have issue with my own application. If I should run it like this, it will show, it will just shut down my my application, and I don't want that to happen. But if your own that you're using, just click OK, it will definitely run. If you are not having issue with your own too, but if you are having the similar issue that I'm having with my own, the way I used to go about it is I'll just come here under this model builder. I'll open that model builder up. 
I will now drag the two that I want to use this project to. I will just drag it in. <clears throat> I will fill in the way I filled the first one. It's still the same procedure. Nothing changes. The same procedure. So I will call this one root instead of roots. I will specify the output coordinate system. I told us that this one and the MENA UTM, they are still the same. So you can pick any one of them depending on uh it's just a matter of choice so the next thing is i'll just click ok so once i click ok the the model has already loaded my two and uh, the parameter that's supposed to be loaded it's ready to run but i'll just click on this so that whatever the output is it will add it to display then i'll now click on this play button to run the two so once i click on this it will start to run it you can see so the run as complete it means the operation that i did now it's complete then i can now have my layer here you can see this layer but the beauty of it is if you look at this layer here you can still see it's still on the same formal layer that we did but if you zoom to a certain level you will see that there is always a difference there is always no matter how little it will be there will be a kind of discrepancy so we have this we can now do the other ones too that's for the buildings for the boundary so that we have three of them intact so i'll just open my mother builder again but your own just run the two everything will work out the way it's supposed to be i'll just open the model this time around i'll pick the building so i'll change the building to instead of buildings i'll make it building I'll change the out this output coordinate is still is still intact then i'll now apply and i will now run the two so uh, the buildings two i've done then i'll do for the boundary two the same procedure nothing changes the boundary i can just call it uh boundary underscore two to differentiate it from the from the former one i'll just the output coordinate is okay then i will now run this so the boundary tool has been created now if you look at uh, the coordinate system of this interface that's by the time you right click inside this canvas you come to data frame properties you check your source or coordinate system rather you see that the coordinate system of that interface is uh, wgs 1984 not uh projected coordinate system so with that with this simple operation that we did now we've converted the coordinate system of our existing layer from geographic to utm projected coordinate system of zone 31 so the next thing i would like us to look at is that uh, there is a concept we we'll call it buffering in gis it has a lot of application we are still making use of this data what i'll just do is i'll open a new new project for uh, interface i'll not save this uh no i don't want to save it i don't uh the essence of buffering <clears throat> it has a lot of applications in gis or in real life situation one of the application of buffering is uh when the government is trying to dualize road in an environment maybe the road is a single road and they want to dualize it using a certain distance to the left certain distance to the right by the time they they buffer that existing road they should be able to tell us the extent at which that road will go to the left and to the right and with that they can tell us the number of buildings that will be affected with that dualization the same thing applicable to river when you are studying flood it is a uh, it is a lay down rule that uh that's supposed to be a maximum i mean minimum distance of a residential building or any construction away from the river bank so if paraventure there are some buildings that contravene that rule 
so it means when the when there is excess rainfall provided every other thing remain constant the river bank will be flooded and those houses along the river bank will be affected so using that we can make any warning system through that to predict if there is this social, uh, social amount of rainfall provided every other thing remain constant this number of houses will be affected and this is the total number of relief material that will be needed provided every other thing remain constant please always bear that in mind because when we are studying flooding there's a lot of things that we have to put in consideration so i'll just load up that uh, our projected files this one this one and uh, this one so these are pro these are projected files and uh, this beauty is supposed to be at the top of the boundary not at the bottom so for us to arrange that you see this these icons they are meant for different things but let's assume i i put us through on how to use this one first drawing order i'll click on it this drawing order will allow you to move your layers based on the type of arrangement you want to build you want them to to show like uh, the order you want them to show if i should put this one up now you can see it has covered up the building so i'll have to bring it down but if it's if your your table of content or the list by is on this one you won't have the access to drop down or drop off so that's one of the importance of this now what i want to do is that uh, i want us to dualize let's say um let's dualize all this fruit with a certain distance and there's something you should notice this coordinate system is displaying in meters that means our coordinate system is in projected so that's one of the things you will know that your coordinate system is in utm or is in projected coordinate system to be precise because there are other coordinates that uh as a utm there are other coordinates that are in meters that their unit is in meters so let us assume we are do we are dualizing all this road by 10 meters when they say they are dualizing the road by 10 meters it means the dualization is five meter to the right five meter to the left so what we'll just do i'll open my modern builder you you don't have to open your model builder what you just have to do is to come to this uh geoprocessing tool under the geoprocessing tool you see a two core buffer there's a two core buffer there but for me i'll just come to this analysis i'll come to proximity i'll see buffer then i'll drag it here so dragging it here i'll just open up the two the feature that i want to do for, which is the road i'll just pick it from here i'll have to specify the output file i mean the output folder where i want the software to output the result of the buffer then i'll call it buffer let's say underscore 10 meters so now here the linear unit that you want to use in buffering is the meters actually i would say the buffer is 10 meters which i told us that when they say they are buffering the road by 10 meters it means five meters to the right and five meters to the left so when you are specifying your values here your value should be in, your value should be in your value should be in meters so here now instead of writing the whole of the 10 we just write 5 which is 5 to the left 5 to the right and if you look at this side type we are saying full that is 5 5 to the to the other side how do you want the end to look like the end should look uh round the metal the uh, planner and another thing i would like us to note here is that you see this dissolve type I'll show us how it's important to choose the soft type. The first one we are going to do will not put the soft, but the second one will put. So I'll just click OK on this. Then I'll run my own tool. But on your own, you just click OK and the, the process will run. So the thing has completed. Then if you look closer, okay, 
the buffer i did not ask it to to add to display then i can come back and add it myself uh buffer 10 meters can you see that can you see that so if they are, if they are to dualize this road now this house will be affected or this building will be affected other building like this one too will be affected you can see this one you will even won't be affected the more so just like that but if you notice something you can see that there is no flow between this buffer and this buffer that's supposed to be a kind of flow between them this one sub is not supposed to even show like there is a there is a kind of a break between these two that's the essence of the soft type that we then pick <clears throat> let us zoom in now that i pick the soft type this time around we are still making use of five meters and the soft type i want it to dissolve all so i'll have to change this name because it's telling me that the output is already in existence let me call this one five so i'll now mm -hmm. click okay then i will now run this another mistake that i did, did i did before i didn't ask this one to add it to display so that's why it's not showing so i have to come and add it myself uh buffer five meters can you see the difference so that's the essence of that dissolve so very very important for your buffer you you do dissolve so this buffer operation as we did it like this we can also do it for points we can do it for polygon as simple as that the the point situation you can do it maybe in a situation whereby we have uh, a filling station and we detach those filling sta uh, the filling station as points and maybe we want to predict a situation of a fire outbreak if there is going to be a fire outbreak from that filling station how many houses will be affected based on the the capacity of that uh, fire outbreak let's say any house within the range of 50 meters from the from the filling station just like the uh, <clears throat> uh pipeline that busted somewhere in lagos was it today so one can easily do the buffer to know how many houses from a particular range of distance maybe 100 distance away from the pipeline how many houses are there that is going to be affected what are the what are the things that uh the firefighter need to prepare for what is the capacity of what they are going to face when they are going to field so the application is it's just the limitation of the application of buffer is just the thinking it has a lot of applications a lot that you can ever imagine so i just mentioned three uh when we are talking about uh uh what was it called um spread of the seeds is also applicable when we are talking about uh siting of institution maybe siting of facilities is also applicable for a particular set of facilities there is a minimal di uh, trekking distance or minimal number of population of people that a particular facility should be serving if we use those uh criteria that's the distance or the the capacity of number of people that a particular facility is supposed to be serving we use those value to buffer the the point of where that facility is then we can dictate or we can predict with highest accuracy in an area that another facility is needed in another place within that region maybe in a local government maybe certain of earth facilities so a lot of things that one can use it for and as i mentioned earlier that as we use it as we do buffer for line you can always do for point and polygon depending on what you use those points line and polygon to represent so that's that about uh buffering actually another thing that i want us to